Let's call, let's bring in Michael Morton, SVB Moth and Nathanson analyst. I can't get it out of my mouth, Michael, uh, but welcome. And it is great to see you. And I don't know, I don't know if Tyler shares my skepticism about the long-term business models of DoorDash and Uber, but as a consumer, um, these companies have changed a lot and they're expensive and uh, make the investment case. I guess maybe that is the investment case now is that they're more profitable. Yes, absolutely. We, uh, we talk about internet. They are expensive stocks also uh, from a consumer perspective, but from a multiple perspective. But the case we see uh, in the gig economy stocks are the largest addressable markets we can really find. Uh, we estimate $4 trillion uh, in addressable spend when you think about mobility or ride share and then delivery encompassing like food delivery from your favorite New York restaurant or grocery delivery. And due to the size of the market, it attracted a lot of venture capital dollars over the last decade. We estimate $125 billion uh, in a slew of gig economy companies that led to some rather irrational behavior and growth at all costs, right? Uh, from pre-COVID to this year, food delivery companies added $60 billion uh, of gross bookings. And we're coming into a new era, we think, for these businesses where the focus is really going to be on profitability. And we see the profitability of these core businesses expanding over the next several years. Uh, and I think it will cause investors to reconsider the views that they've held around the gig economy stocks for several years, which have been a correct level of skepticism up until now. Is there the level of demand to compensate for what I perceive as a, as a customer of these, the, the rising prices that you're being asked to pay for the service? Yeah, so our well, demand our outstrip the, 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 the pricing. Yeah, so there's different levels of demand. And we looked historically about how these industries behave. But there is no example, right? Like Uber didn't exist uh, in prior recessions. Neither did DoorDash. So we looked at how consumers behave with taxi cab spending in prior recessions. And it was rather resilient with low single digit declines in recessionary period. And restaurant spend uh, is mind blowingly strong when it comes to tough macro environments. In the 2000, 2001 era, restaurant spend grew through the recession. Mm -hmm. In the financial crisis, there was only three quarters of year over year declines. And it was, again, low single digits. And then if you go back over a multi generational trend, consumers spend more on having food prepared for them every year. And again, there will be ebbs and flows. Ordering from DoorDash costs more money than if you go and just pick it up yourself. Mm -hmm. But we look at those long-term trends and the behavior of the consumer and what gives us comfort around the long-run demand you're asking yeah. about. Yeah. Well, I think that's interesting. Uh, consumers, uh, I confess, I'm lazy. Uh, I like it when they <laughs> You are not. And, uh, and you're not the only one who's balking at some of these prices. Yeah. It's the, it's the, I mean, the other night, by the way, uh, Michael, I I have a favorite restaurant in town. There's actually one in your town as well, right. but I, I got so tired of waiting for them to deliver that I went down and got it myself. I just <laughs> damn it, I'm going to my man. Anyhow, He's had that, enough. Here and there, that's too much information. <laughs> Michael Norton, we thank you. See you again soon.